Hey everyone, so in this video I wanted to show a useful application of MATLAB or Octave, which is to help you solve algebra, and particularly simultaneous equations. So for example, let me just make up a circuit. Let's say you have a, a voltage source, and let's put some resistors. Okay, so that, let's call this resistor one. Just make up some number. And there's resistor two. Okay. And let's say you want to solve for everything, the voltage and the current everywhere. Or let's say, how about just the current for, for now? I'll call this I1, I2, I3. So solve for I1, I2, I3. While we're at it, I'll label the voltages. Okay, so like volt V1, I went this way, V2 this way, V3 this way. Okay, so what formulas do we know? We can go KCL here at this node. So let's say going out is positive, so going in is negative. So that means that's negative. That's going out, that's going out. Okay, that's KCL. Um, how about KVL? Let's say we go around this way. So if we go, that's negative, right? This would be negative 12 plus V1 plus V2. Okay, and let's say we go KVL this way. Maybe that's unnecessary. Negative V2 plus V3 equals zero, but we knew that, right? These are in parallel. V2 equals V3. So maybe we don't have to write that. And then what else do you know? You know that Ohm's law, Ohm's law, Ohm's law. So, okay, so we have, oh, I'll just write V2 equals V3, right? I should have wrote that earlier. So we have six equations, six unknowns, how do you solve? Okay, let's solve some of it by hand and then we'll solve the rest of it on the computer. So, because some of it is pretty straightforward, right? Like you can plug this in here, you can plug this in here. Let me do that right now. So V1. plus V2 Oops. equals, I'll move this on the other side of the equation. Okay, so that's this there. And then I can even go like V2 goes here, V3 goes there. So let me write that. Okay, so, so we have this equation, this equation, and this equation. So we reduced it now to three equations, three unknowns. I basically just tried to get rid of all the voltages. So let me rewrite these. So let me rewrite this one first. I'm gonna, gonna leave space. Okay, and then let me write this one. I'll put the coefficient in front because I1, I2, I3 are my variables. Okay, 
plus. And then there is, I'm just going to write 0i3. Okay, now this equation, I'm going to move everything to one side of the equation. So there's no i1, so 0i1 plus, and then I'll move this to the left side of the equation. Okay, look at this. I can express this as a matrix. Right, look, it's already kind of in kind of a matrix form. So let me just write the coefficients. And then I'll explain it. So right, when you multiply a matrix, it's this times this plus this times this plus this times this equals that, right? And then second row, that times that plus that times that plus that times that equals this, and that's this equation. And then the third equation is this times this plus this times this plus this times this equals Right, so I, I turn this mess into this kind of matrix equation. And let's use MATLAB or Octave to solve this. And once you know the technique, you could have 10 equations, 10 unknowns, right? 100 equations, 100 unknowns. You can solve three equations, three unknowns by hand, right? Just do substitution. But once it's like 10 equations, 10 unknowns, then definitely like don't solve it by hand, let the computer solve it. So let's talk about how to get the computer to solve it for you. Okay, so let's get Octave started. I'm going to use Octave since it's open source. And there's a bunch of windows that I just closed most of them and I just left the editor open on the left side. And then I have the command window on the right side. So when you use Octave, there were options, right? Like CLI and GUI. CLI is like if you just use the like this command window and it's completely text-based. And then all your answers are here. Or the graphical user interface is this, where you, there's icons and things. Right, okay, so let's get that matrix here. Okay, so I want to get this matrix written in octave. So I'm just going to call this matrix A. And then this is how I'm going to type it. So the first row, minus 1, 1, 1, I'll just write here. And then the next row, I go semicolon. That's like going to the next row. And then I got R1, R2, 0. And then third row, 0, R2, minus R3. OK. And then this vector here. I'll call that vector B. And then the first row is 0. So now it has one entry. And then semicolon goes to the next row, 12, semicolon, to the third row, 0. And my strategy is I'm going to right, have matrix A, vector B. What I want is, right, if this is matrix A, this is vector b, and I'll call this my unknown x. Right then, th 
the equation looks like this. Matrix A times vector B equals, uh, sorry, vector X equals vector B. To solve for this, I have to take the inverse of this times B. I have to put in the values for R1, R2, and R3, right? So R1, I said, was 50. R2 is 75. R3 is 100. Okay, so if you just run this as is, right up here it says run, save file, and run, or you can just press whatever hotkey, and this on my computer is F5. Right, so it shows the things I typed, matrix A, vector B. If you want to hide it from the command window, you just put a semicolon at the end here, like this. If I do that for everything, when I run it, it's not going to show any output here. And if you want to clear this command window, you can just type CLC. It like clears the command window. Let me run this again. Right, so it doesn't show anything. And really what I want is to take my answer is going to be the inverse of A times B. I'm going to run this. There's my answer. So current 1 is 0.129, current 2 is 0.073, current 3 is 0.055. Just like that, at the click of a button. Okay, I'll show you one more thing. There's actually a more efficient way to do this computation. So instead of inverse of A times B, you do a command that looks like this. It's like a special operator that has a more efficient algorithm at computing. So let me run it. And you get the same answer either way. Um, but let me just time how long it takes to do each one. So there are these functions called tick and talk. So it like it has a clock. So tick starts the clock, talk stops the clock. So it basically times how long it takes to run an operation. Okay, let's try this. Oh, okay, so it's too fast. I'm gonna loop it a hundred times. So this is how you do a loop. Okay. Let's try it. There, let's run it 10,000 times. There you go. Okay, so I'm, I'm running this inverse computation 10,000 times, and then this more efficient algorithm 10,000 times. So it's racing. Ready? Go. Okay, so you see the second algorithm is a faster computation. Either way, you're getting the same answer. Okay, so give this a try with different problems and kind of get accustomed to it. It really helps being able to solve simultaneous equations, right? And if you need any help, just let me know. Okay, I'll see you on the next video.